Okay, so my last video was a bit of a divergence from the empennage. I got my wing kit in and decided to post an inventory of that. And I might actually have a quick follow-up to that soon because I got another shipment of back-ordered parts last weekend, and so I may do a little unboxing video. But for now, I'm finally getting back to the empennage. So in real life, I've actually finished the horizontal stabilizer, and it was my intention to post uh, one big video showing all the steps all the way to the completion of it. But honestly, one of the things that's got me so far behind with making videos in the first place is that I've got hours and hours and gigs and gigs of footage spread across hundreds of files. And it's really just taken me forever to sort through it all. And when I did finally get a bunch of it edited together, it was over an hour long. So I've been trying to keep these things under 20 minutes and really kind of closer to 10 or 15. So rather than post one monstrous hour-long video that nobody would be able to stand to watch, I thought it'd be better to break it into three installments that nobody would be able to stand to watch. So on the negative side, I still won't be finishing the horizontal stabilizer in this one. On the positive side, I should be able to post the remaining two videos in pretty rapid succession because I've really already done most of the work. I just need to clean them up and render and upload them. So uh, getting down to business, what's this guy in the video been doing? Well. Uh, where I left off last time with the stabilizer at least, I had joined the left and right halves with the front spar assembly and most of the rest of the structural parts, the ribs and stringers and such, and had riveted the rest of the inspar ribs in. So technically the horizontal stabilizer was one single piece with the nose ribs riveted to the skins and the spar and inspar ribs riveted to that. So the bulk of the remaining work uh, now is to rivet the skins to the structure inside. So this is done with the whole assembly still in the cradles, which I've switched uh, back to my strap style cradles that give a little better you know, freedom of movement and access, as you can see. And I still have the whole thing on the floor of my basement. And uh, so anyway, this, the riveting of the skins to the structure is done working from the front of the stabilizer back, which in this orientation means from the bottom up, starting with a couple of hundred rivets that attach the skin to the front spar. So that's what you've been watching here in the time lapse. Uh, the plans don't specify any particular rivet pattern to follow for this, but much like other similar pieces on the empennage so far, I chose to start in the center of each panel and work my way towards the ends, riveting every other hole, of course, with Clicos in between. So I worked from the center out in one direction and then went back to the center and went the other way. And I did every other rivet in the bottom panels, uh, then the top, and then I went back and removed all the Clicos and did the ones in between. And also the outboard half of the of these are, use a slightly shorter um, rivet, shorter shank length uh, than the inboard half because the inboard rivets have to go through the skin, the spar flange, and the spar cap, whereas the outboard ones only go through the skin and the spar flange. So that was another reason to you know, start in the middle at kind of that, that break in rivet length and you know, work my way toward each end. So once the skins were riveted to the uh, front spar, the next step is to start working my way back, riveting skin to inspar ribs, and specifically starting with the inboard inspar ribs that also uh, are attached to the stringers. So at this point, I'm, uh, I actually filmed a lot more in real time rather than time lapse, so I'm going to go let real time me do a lot more of the splaining from here on out. All right, riveting the last. Um, Let's see, this is the last panel, and I'm doing the rivets on the inspar ribs up to the stringers, and most of these are straightforward. Some of them get really kind of painfully tight up under because the stringers are, the stringers get in the way up here. Over here, no big deal. Easy to get at. Bucking most of them squeezer on these ones that I can get at. And this is a perfect case, a uh, perfect time to use the hand squeezer because it's just a few. I've already got it set up. It's easy to tweak it. Um, no need to hook up the pneumatic. And this one doesn't get a rivet because it's dimpled. It's going to be a fairing screw. That guy gets a rivet. I think this guy's a fairing screw. Yep. And this guy gets a rivet. So, and I don't really need the fuel 
tubing grommet trick here, but I also don't think it can hurt. Just using it. And this one's a little tricky because I'm I get worried that the the squeezer. This is another reason for the hand squeezer here. This this lip of the yoke can catch. Uh, if you're not careful, it, I think it might catch inside this lightning hole. And if that was the pneumatic and it was caught and you hit the button, it's going to bend this rib before you know what happened. Whereas in here, uh, I think I can kind of carefully watch and make sure nothing like that's going on. My head is in the way. bucking a lot of them. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way, well I did that one, but I'm going to work my way up. So you know, I'm kind of doing this row and then this row. I don't know that it's crucial that you do it exactly like that. So sometimes I'll, like a, I did that one a little ahead of myself there, but that's okay. Now this is a case where I have to do it left-handed. I'm not really as comfortable left-handed, but should be all right. Okay, well, I am happy to report that at the time of this recording, we have since been to Costco and replaced our big-ass bag of bacon bits. Uh, anyway, so just uh, working my way back and forth here, doing the rest of the rivets um, to the inspar ribs up to, but not including uh, the point where they intersect the stringers. All right, uh, so today I'm finally getting around to doing some of the rivets on the horizontal stabilizer that I've been absolutely dreading. And those are these, uh, well, basically six. This one should be easy because you can get at it from out here with the squeezer or whatever. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six that rivet the skins, and in this case also a rib, to uh, the skins to this stringer right here, this shorter... Uh, front stringer and the trick uh, what makes it difficult is that if I try to show inside here so you can see this top row you know you can see these just fine they'll be easy to get to uh, right there but the ones I'm talking about now are on the underside of you know this the middle um, you know, that part of the stringer. So they're up under here. So I've got to find a way to hold the bucking bar up under there, get my hand down in there, which is, it's tight enough as it is, as you can see, my hand with a bucking bar, holding it up under here where I can't see the rivet. There's certainly no space to hold a mirror at the same time. I just got to do it by feel and that'll be fine. Uh, but worst, best case, I'll be bucking and then Pulling my hand out, going, reaching in to check, uh, you know, it'll be tedious. Uh, worst case, 
I screw up and it's hard to get at, uh, or it makes it's difficult to hold the rivet, uh, hold the bucking bar parallel, and so the rivet clenches over, whatever. Or, uh, and I think I've taken good precaution here, but I was worried about dropping the bunking bar, especially if it's the big tungsten one, uh, down in and marring the spar. Don't mar the spar. So that's why I put some some padding in there, and uh, you know, in case I drop something. But anyway, so I think I've got a plan. What I'm going to do here is uh, I've got I've decided to use the big bucking bar. Interestingly enough, this is the one I don't really use that often because I like the tuck the tungsten bucking bar. But I've decided to use this big steel one, which is actually, I think, lighter than the tungsten one. It's certainly less dense. And it has this, you know, of course, this L shape to it. And my idea is with that, I'll be able to sort of reach around behind, carefully get it in there, and hold it. And I can't film this at the same time, but hold it, uh, hold it up in there against the rivet and I'll hold my hand down in there farther. And then as you can see, I've got some paper towel taped onto it and some padding on the skin so that I don't mar or, or dent the inside of the skin because that would just be terrible. So that's what I'm gonna try and uh, we'll see. We'll see how well that works. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So there's six, six times four. So I got 24 of these to get through. And then, uh, you know, famous last words, but after that, I think everything should be smooth sailing. Oh, something else. So what I've done here is drawn a line kind of on the, on the tape, sort of in the center, uh, just freehand, so that I can align the bucking bar centered on this Clico up here, which should help me center the bucking bar on the rivet down below. And I'm hoping that by using this bigger bar and having my hand all the way down in here like this, uh, best I can, it'll at least stay more stable and that I can hold it square. Uh, this really feels tight. I've also got this, this is really tight. I've taken some of the picos out as well. back side so that I'm not moving around the skins that I'm trying to attach. Looks pretty good. Yeah, the hardest part. There's no room to work my fingers. Wow. Okay. Good, I wish I had counted. Okay. done okay okay now the last one out there so I'm bucking this one first rather than using the squeezer because there's a little bit of a gap I noticed uh, between the skin and the st 
stringer. It'd be hard to get anything in there when you take the Clico out. It'd be hard to get anything in there to hold that together. No room for a clamp. And Clico's doing all it can. So I think bucking, especially with the little piece of fuel tubing, although this is so thick it's not going to give, but if I buck this one, the act of bucking will kind of slam the skin down and smash everything together, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. And then I may finish it off with the squeezer. So, here we go. Did it. Yep. Okay. That's that guy. All right, that one over there. So, yeah, got the line there. I hold this down there, get up under the spar or the stringer, sorry, and look at the line and line that up with the point of the Clico that's above the rivet, because those are, happen to be in line, and then I push this all the way against the underside of, you know, this flange of the stringer to get it flat, and then push back with the gun, hold everything like that, and go. Alright, so it kind of feels like I'm sort of getting into the home stretch here. I've still got a lot more rivets to do, but I feel like I've done everything that's, you know, should be tricky or, or if not tricky, just difficult to get to. Uh, so the next step here is to do all these rivets in the, the long stringers. Again, these are should be easier to get to. There's more of them, but they're easier to get to from the inside. And um, yeah, I think with these I'll probably follow the same kind of pattern that I've done with other long stretches like on the spars where I sort of start in the center and work my way out every other, every other one and then come back and fill in the gaps. So uh, let me get started. Alright, that's it for the stringers. Woohoo! Woohoo! Did I really get them all? I did! Yep, okay.
onto the ribs. All right, I'm gonna end this one here to keep it close to 20 minutes. I'll save the ribs for next time, and after that, we'll be installing the rear spar. And that should just about do it for the horizontal stabilizer. So uh, those next two should be coming real soon. Uh, thanks for watching.